Um, <laughs> but no, um, so his uh, the other air marshal that was sitting in coach, Liam Neeson, of course, gets fancy smancy first class because who wants the who the fuck wants to watch an air marshal and fucking coach? That's what was hilarious to me is they he was the air marshal in first class and it was like oh okay so we get we see what it is he's so good he's in the classy seat the other guy's in the shit ass seat and the other guy's like wearing a cheap suit Liam Neeson looks all good in his leather jacket and shit like that the guy looks like he's wearing a cheap suit he's got a bad haircut and a pair of glasses looks like a pencil pusher they got him sitting in coach so anyway yeah that guy got screwed he kind of looked like Jim Caviezel didn't he was he Jim Caviezel no I don't think it was Jim Caviezel I thought it was Alexis Denisov no, it was it not Alexis him. Denisov. It this mysterious him. man who apparently was Jim Caviezel Denisov Alexis, um, he he was um, con- he was taken over by the terrorists, and uh, they caught him. Somehow he had a briefcase full of cocaine, and that briefcase full of cocaine. And somehow the terrorists knew that he had a briefcase full of cocaine. Yeah, ended up being the bomb for the plane. It, once again, how the hell did any of this happen? They don't want you to ask any of these questions. So that air marshal is actually the first one to die because Liam Neeson kills him because the guy goes, I need this money. Apparently they're going to bribe him. And uh, he ended up killing him because he pulled a gun on him. But now we've got this issue at the end of the movie where now this guy brought a bomb onto the plane and uh, he tells the passengers, there's a bomb on the plane. And they believe him. And then they try to work together to, uh, to disarm said bomb. But as it turns out, said bomb cannot be disarmed. So they do... I don't know if this is an actual thing. If this is, this is the most terrifying thing I've ever heard. Apparently there is protocol to barricade a bomb against the rear Mm -hmm. cockpit door of the plane and you pile all the luggage against the bomb to try to soften the blow you make everybody sit in the front of the plane and then you pray to god that you're not gonna like just explode on contact oh and you descend to eight thousand feet as well that's very important so it is around this point when they're descending to eight thousand feet when they're doing this whole thing that the terrorists reveal themselves and there are not one there are two terrorists just like scream there's another twist there's another twist um and the two terrorists are both military guys who are disenfranchised with the security of america and so they decide that they are a going to uh blow up this plane or kill these passengers or pretend or frame an air marshal for killing passengers um and two they're going to get 150 million dollars and disappear into the ether it's at this point that I'm talking about the climax of the movie. The clusterfucks happens, you know, fighting, shooting, and then this is the scene that I was talking about where I felt was the most 90s action flick and I loved it. So the pilot is being told by the two um, fighter pilots next to the plane, do not descend or we'll shoot you down because obviously there's a bomb in the plane. He is told by Liam Neeson, no, 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 you have to descend. He descends because he's like, fuck it. And he he literally says, fuck it, or something like, screw it, or to hell with it. And descends the plane quickly, which of course causes a disruption in cabin pressure. Um, And there's a moment where everything turns a little bit weightless. The moment. And Liam Neeson uses this opportunity to just slowly reach and calmly reach his hand out for his gun, which floats directly into his palm and goes to shoot the terrorist. And I, that's the point when I giggled out loud in the movie. That was pretty That was pretty hilarious. When physics makes things totally badass. But, you know, what, what was great is that that's actually possible physics because we know that's what planes do when you descend rapidly that's why people pay to go on those space flights where they go all gravity free for a second it was just sort of funny because everything went gravity free except for liam neeson so it's like is he made of magnets is he is that he a, would be the twist he's an alcoholic he a, is, made he of a, magnets. is he a lead is he a lead human like is he what is is he being stuck to the ground through magnets or lead like what was happening there he's a force of will he's a force of will <laughs> Um, and yeah, so then firefight, shooting, boom, they land the plane, the end. Everybody's happy. The only people who die are the terrorists. 
the unfortunate captain, the unfortunate passenger, and the unfortunate air marshal. Everyone says how they're going to stick up for Liam Neeson and how everything's going to be okay. Because, you know, in real life, he would lose, he's lost his job. They'd probably find a way to sue him for something. You know, it's never, it's never like (laughs) what it is in the real world. I actually think a closer, this was... This was the unrealistic version of Flight starring Denzel Washington. <laughs> like, Denzel Washington's Flight was a realistic version of what would happen if a hero saved a plane full of people. They would find him for drinking and they'd be like, You are an alcohol! They prob- That's probably what they're going to do to the music. They're going to be like, Hey, just because you saved everybody, fuck you. You're, you were drinking. Had you not been drinking, maybe you would have had better judgment and stopped this whole situation before it happened. And... Mr. Sad Frumpy Suit Guy wouldn't be dead, and the captain wouldn't be dead, and Air Marshal McGee wouldn't be dead. And on that happy note, we're back to reality. <laughs> this is the end. I'm Steven. I'm Danielle. And this was Midnight Movie Matinee. In your face, universe. <laughs>